Hey guys, and welcome to the fourth episode of Back With The Squad. Today, I'm here with the 2002 Maryland football team who won the Peach Bowl. First up, we have Coach Mike Loxley. Lila, thanks for having me. And I would not be the head coach if it wasn't for a bunch of these guys on here and members of this team. I mean, they pretty much are the catalyst for what I like to call a renaissance years of Maryland football. So glad to be able to catch back up with a bunch of these guys. Next up, we've got quarterback Scott McBrien. Yes. Mm. Hey, boys. Uh, Maryland fans, thanks for tuning in. Uh, these guys were, were fun to play with. 30 game, uh, won 30 games in three years. Uh, one of five programs to do that. And uh, I know Coach Loxley is going to take us back to the promised land. All right, then we've got defensive back Dominique Foxworth. Hey. Pardon <laughs> <laughs> the interruption. <laughs> Keep it moving. All right, we've got wide receiver Steve Suter. How you doing? I'd just like to say to all the fans that are going to tune in for this, I actually just watched the recap of our 2002 season, and it was great to see how we packed the stadium with fans. And, and while we were there, I don't know if we appreciated as much the support that you guys gave us when we were there, but – Having been removed from the program and seeing how other teams don't get the same support that we had when we were there, it was put a smile on my face, and we just want to say thank you for all that. And we've got linebacker Dequell Jackson. Uh, it was uh, in 2002. It was a great journey. Uh, these young men. I was a young boy on the on the uh, on the scene, but uh, I, I learned a lot from these uh, these veterans. Had a great time. You're an asshole, man. <laughs> <laughs> You're an asshole. We've got wide receiver Scooter Monroe. Hey, everyone. Maryland fans, Scooter Monroe here. Um, love getting together with this crew and seeing some of these old faces. Um, Turk time. We had a great time in, in my years there. Uh, 10 and 2, 11 and 3. Some of the best years of my life set us on a path to be in the history books at, at, the, at the University of Maryland and uh, couldn't ask for anything more. Then we've got defensive back, Jerome Cox. What's up, Turp fans? Good to have everybody back. It's, hey, this made my day. I appreciate all y'all being on here, man. <laughs> Look forward to it. We've got defensive back, Madhu Williams. Hi, everyone. This is, um, it's been one of the best journeys of my life, being part of this uh, – 2001 to 2004, uh, 13, and personally, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Mike Loxley, and uh, I thank you, Lox. We go back since sophomore year at Duval High School, yeah. and I uh, appreciate you, man. Appreciate All right, then we got linebacker Sean Merriman. What's up, Turp fans? Uh, good to be back. Uh, I'm a lot older now. When I first came in, I was a young pup, and everybody else here was uh, coming down on me, giving me hell uh, as a freshman. But um, glad to be back and seeing everybody on the same page once again. Appreciate all your support over the years. Then we've got defensive tackle Randy Starks. Randy. 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 He put a picture in front of his uh, thing. Oh, there he is. Hey, Randy. Oh, you can can y'all see me? We can see you. What's up with your Wi Fi, bro? <laughs> <laughs> it's constipated. <laughs> on the hot spot. He was a hot spot from his sidekick. <laughs> Randy used to know that. Randy on the flip phone. <laughs> <Randy, you're laughs> <flip -fall. laughs> you have a signal of wireless. Got a razor. Phone razor. So we got running back Bruce Perry. Uh, Turf fans. Uh, thanks a lot for being. Uh, being so supportive of us over the years. Um, glad to be here. You're going to find that, you know, it doesn't matter how much time goes by or how much distance we're apart. We're all a family. We'll continue to be. Um, much thanks to Coach Locks, you know, responsible for everything that I knew as a player, but more importantly, more responsible for bringing all of us together as a recruiting coordinator. He, he saw talent. Went out there and got it, and that's what he's trying to do now, trying to rebuild the dynasty that we created. Then we've got guard Lamar Bryant. That almost made me cry, Pooh. That was good, man. Nation. Hey, man. Was good. 
What's good? Uh, shout out to Coach Locks. You know, he's part of the big, big reason why we all sit in this room right now. I just consider myself lucky to be amongst all a bunch of elite athletes. You know, I know I wasn't a, the sharpest tool in the drawer, but, you know, it was what it was. You know, we got it done when it counted. So, like, thanks for y'all support. <laughs> Okay, you on yourself, man. You were so smart. Hey, I, yeah, I, you get my tra- I got my transcripts right now. You want me to get them right now? I don't know how I walked out in four years. I got them right now. You are a most beautiful em. baby, man. You're our most beautiful baby we have. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got – we have kicker Nick Novak. Hey, guys. Uh, Turp family. All you guys, I haven't seen you in a long time. Um – I couldn't have uh, had the career I had without you. You guys toughened me up. Um, I want to do my job for all of you. That's all that matters is doing my job for my teammates. And so I just want to tell you I love you and uh, look forward to this right now. We have offensive lineman Todd White. Hey, everyone. Happy to be here. Happy to be included with this group. It's, uh, it's hard to believe it was 18 years ago that we, uh, we were out there dominating, but – a lot of good memories from that time. A lot of uh, with the guys on here, so appreciate that being being included with this. We've got offensive lineman Stefan Hire. Yes. Boom. There, there, we there we go. There we go. Nation, I appreciate your time and um, getting with these guys. I love all these guys. Sean, me and him had a love hate relationship, but I still love him too. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate all the time I had with these guys, man. I was a young guy, too. <laughs> I was a freshman. I came with Sean, and he, he had his fresh tat- lights on, lights off tattoo, and I was like, I don't like this guy already. <laughs> I'm the best man in his whole freshman class. Oh, he stood up and said that in front of my face. I'm like, oh, there's a problem already. <laughs> that day, I knew I had to take his ass out. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. oh, my God, really, man. We had the best time of my life in college, man. Look at you guys, man. A lot of memories, a lot of love, a lot of wins, a lot of everything. Appreciate y'all. Then we have safety. I, we think that would be a, I think that would be a great lights out match right now because this seems like he's still a little upset about some shit. Hey, yeah. He came ready, too. Yeah, that base, you know, that's why he got to beat him. Ass 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 that's why he ain't got no shirt on. <laughs> 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 I'm the, I'm, the best, I'm the best player in the, in the team in Maryland right now. I'm like, what? all right. We have safety uh, Denard Wilson. Uh, hey, Turf fans. It's an honor and pleasure. Hey, man, it's good to see you cats, man. I haven't been, been around you guys in a long time. Uh, much props to Locks. Uh, Locks recruited most of us. And if it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't have been a Turf. Um, you know, I surprised <laughs> all of them when, when, I could re, uh, when I committed. That's but, you. Uh, you know, a hey, big thing about us, man, Terps, we stick together. And Locks, you're going to get this thing going. And I believe in you. We believe in you. And let's go ahead and win it. Let's go win this title uh, this year and the years, uh, years ahead, man. And then we have wide receiver Rich Parson. Oh. <clears throat> Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. Hello, Terps fans. Um, very excited to be a part of this group. My dude's laughing. I love that dude, too, with the ball head. Uh, hey, anyway, Coach Locks, um, I'm happy to see you. <laughs> Shut up, Dominique. <laughs> the lighting, man. I can't say nothing. I can't <laughs> watch In that light in your office. <sighs> like, hey, you only fans. You got only fans. Yeah, man. <laughs> Just lighting in there, man. In there looking like you selling ass. <laughs> need to leave with that one leave with riches you, that's a good <laughs> one and we also have Jafar Williams, who I don't think is on video yet. So there's Jafar. What's up, man? Um, just want to say what's up to Turp Nation. Um, obviously, uh, we did a lot of special things together. It's funny listening to these guys back on this uh, on this Zoom and on this chat. They don't change. Everybody gets a little <laughs> bit older, but everybody stays the same, including myself. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but uh, oh yeah, we really, going in on you too. Huh, yeah, boy? you can go in all you want. But that's all I got. Love you guys. Love Turf Nation. 
So a lot of you guys, um, Garrick McPherson, you left out Garrick McPherson. Oh, I did. Yeah. Okay, sorry, I didn't. Yeah, he in the yard right now. <laughs> <laughs> and Garrick looking like Kimbo Slice. <laughs> <laughs> he do look like oh my god, like he the head of the Muslim gang in jail. Right, Last Turf fans, um, during this during this 2002 um, that time, I was a young guy, but I but I, I played around some guys that taught me a lot. You know, Denard Wilson, Rome Cox. Some older guys that installed a lot of things in me at a young age. And honestly, if it wasn't for Coach Locks, uh, you know, coming in my, my high school, my senior year, um, you know, just confirming to make sure I wanted to be a turf. Um, now, here we are years later. Everyone's still the same, just getting older. Still the same family, still the same love. It's a joy to be a turf. So a lot of you guys played a big role in, you know, making Maryland football at the time and ACC, you know, powerhouse. Again, you guys were able to win. Uh, you know, 10 games in consecutive seasons for the first time in school history. You guys won 11 games for the first time since 1976, especially, you know, for the older players on this call and, you know, Coach Locks. What was it like just, you know, being a part of that transformation? Mm. Uh, who wants to, want to start with answering that one? I'll start. I didn't, I didn't know no better. I didn't know that Maryland wasn't good prior. You don't pay attention too much of it when you're high school. You're just playing high school ball and you're, maybe paying attention to the local schools. I, I surely wasn't, though. So getting to Maryland and noticing that we didn't have many winning seasons prior to us getting there really didn't affect me in that way because I didn't pay attention to it. So I'm the same way. I, I'm from Georgia, so <clears throat> I knew nothing about Maryland football, no, nothing about the wins they had prior to. I just saw that that Orange Bowl year prior to getting there, how much fun they, they were having. Not just more of the wins, just how much fun they were. Like They looked like a, a group, a team. Uh, nope. And it looked like when I got on my visit, I was like, "This, these guys are the guys I, I saw on TV. Like, they look like a family. And it, that's what really made me come to Maryland because they look like they want to have fun. They were having fun. And they liked each other. Mm. I'm going to say, um, I'll say, you know, coming out of high school, you know, I didn't really know much about college football at all. You know, I just knew that as as most of us on this call – you know, know that, you know, you don't want it to end. You've seen so many high school seniors play their last down. And if you got the talent, you know, you make it to the next level. And you know, I always have to give kudos to the coaching staff for assembling so much talent, you know, so much untapped talent, because at the time, you know, Maryland was the laughing stock of the ACC. Correct me if I'm wrong, fellas. And, it out, come out of high school. It was always and, you know, we had good players on our team. You know, Lamont Jordans. You got the Lamont Jordans and the Sean Fortes. Um, we had good players. But, you know, we, we really didn't just know how to work and how to win. You know, once we were able to understand how to, how to work, number one, and what it took to, to just win one game, you know, the rest was history. I, um, I, 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 I can remember that our first game against North Carolina in future, you know, yep. we, had, we had Julius Peppers, Ryan Sims all on a knee. Cause, and we had to take a timeout because we messed up on uh, formation. And that's after giving up an early touchdown. <laughs> and the future is like, you know, look at them, they gas. And well, that, that was only because we had good coaching. Um, but for them to be able to assemble – so much talent and to be able to get maximize so many of us to go out there and perform. I mean, you got, you, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Um, not only that, man, I know that, and for this is just, this is for me off the field. We were more of a family off the field than we were on the field. If you saw one of us, you saw multiple of us. You know, we rode together. And so that's a big factor in our success. So, you know, a lot of personalities came together. And the only thing we wanted to do was win, period. So, uh, you were uh, there when there was trash, weren't you? You were there for some trash years before. I, I grew up, dude. I grew up in the state there, of Maryland. I was, I was five and six, two years in a row, bro. Yep. I grew Mr. up in the state Arnold. of Maryland, man. I, I watched Maryland football just limp for years, and then I knew we walked in the door. Like, I remember, I remember that day in the atrium with Scooter and Bruce and all that. We were like, nah, this can't happen. And then uh, after two seasons of five and six, you know, when with Coach Lawson and all the new staff came in, it's like, 
now we got to fire. It's like, and I think that was the biggest thing about us. It didn't matter who our opponent was because we played some some top tier talent. And but the biggest thing was like we were we weren't an open hand. We were a closed fist. We went out there every single game, win, lose, or draw, and just bought our asses off. That was the biggest thing. It's funny I because I talked to a lot of people. And I lot showed up to save y'all by my asses. That's what happened. I know. And truth is truth. <laughs> y'all some trash. Y'all some trash. Y'all some trash. And then me and Randy come. All of a sudden, we win the ACC championship. You're welcome. <laughs> I ain't heard, I heard <laughs> Nam, thank you yet. Uh, Nam, wow. thank you. Who, who, yet. who, who said um, that? You five and six bucks. Wow. wow. Um, but yeah, no, we, we had a lot of talent, talent on those in those years. And we just, we didn't. We didn't, we couldn't put it all together, whether it was the scheme that we had or what have you. But when, um, you know, when, when Ralph came and, and we kept on Locks and kept on Franklin and we kept a lot of Ooh. that talent and we yeah, had a next, next level of, of, of teammates that were, that were sick and tired of losing. And I felt like our work ethic changed a little bit as well. Um, we practiced, you know, really hard and we, we were really confident in, in what we were doing. And then, you know, once, once you got on a roll and we got confidence, uh, winning begets winning. And we just, we just never stopped at that point. Um, so yeah, it was, it was an amazing time. And, uh, you know, we couldn't, we couldn't ask for a better end to, to the last two years, but yes, it was tough sledding there for the first, for the first couple of years. Well, I'll tie it all together, Lila, because coming in 97, and being a part of bringing in a bunch of these guys apart, because we had a ton of other guys that recruited the Steve Greatwoods, the Bob Hefners, Elliot Uzelak, a lot of great coaches. Coach Mike Gundy have all come through the program. Ruben Carter. And Ruben Carter, exactly. And But what I will say is, and a, a lot of them, you know, we started out five and two or five and one and had a chance to be bowl eligible uh, again. 99 against Duke. And so we weren't as trash as maybe the stories get older and older, but I will agree that we didn't know how to win. We didn't understand the standard it took to win. And it took bringing Ralph in, who'd been the Super Bowls as an assistant, been a part of the ACC championship teams I grew up as a kid rooting for, to basically give us the formula. I mean, I'll never forget, I, to this day, Margin of error. I know on offense, anybody that knows Ralph Regan knows he says good teams don't beat themselves. Don't beat themselves. Make the other teams do it. And so we went back to back five or six years, and I, I got to give Ron Vanderlyn and, and the staff that he had credit for at least being able to identify the E.J. Hendersons, the Lamar Bryants, the Steve Suiters, the, you know, uh, Leon Joes. There's a ton of guys. Now, we are very thankful to Dominique and, and Randy for coming in and putting the candles on top of the cake that we, we made. But these guys learned how to win under Ralph Friesen. You know, I can remember Madhu and Rich coming in at the same time and uh, right when the transition was happening, and it almost did not happen for them. Uh -huh. I remember, you know, Rich, we had signed him the year before. I put him in prep school and 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 – Ralph didn't necessarily was, – he was kind of hesitant on why would I take this kid. And Madhu transferred from Towson. And Scotty McBride, who is the last true franchise quarterback we've had, hey. you know, transferring in as a walk-on. I mean, so there's a lot of behind-the-scenes stories of how piece by piece we put this team together. But it all started with believing and having a coach like Ralph come in and instill the standard in which we had to play to win championships and win at a high level. And all these guys, I mean, they all were great players. Some developed later than others. Some came in uh, with all the accolades, but they were a team and they were a family, really, really close knit group. And to me, the culture is what drove this squad. And that's pretty much the recipe that we're trying to follow now. Fox, you hit it. You hit it. Culture beats scheme and talent in football. Yeah. So many people try to uh, believe that it's all about the talent that you acquire. That doesn't equate to winning. Uh, the culture in which we had at Maryland when we all came together, it was one that was able to teach younger guys. Uh -huh. That's what, um, we had a bunch of guys that were – we didn't have five stars. I mean, we were moons, we were moons and shoes, you know, and, and we were a bunch of – so once we got the formula to success and we had the culture, when other young men came in, we groomed them. 
Uh, we put them under our wing, and it was different positions. We all hung out. We all if one went, we all went together. And I think so that's that, what you call it, grooming. When um, when Caron punched me in the face, we call that grooming. <laughs> it was grooming culture. That's what uh, that, uh, that was. Ty Stu uh, grooming you. Ty Freak was grooming you. Come <laughs> <laughs> uh, on, damn, damn near put me to sleep. The that same, was grooming. Hey, that was culture. The same, <laughs> the the same man, the the came under out. our wing too. The savior came under our wing too. You lying, day day. You was on the sideline working on that adversity. You didn't talk to us. <laughs> that was a different. That was a different weight class battle because Neek was about 135, 140, right. and Corona was. I, I, I was, yeah. I, that's all right. I deserved it. I was talking hella shit because I was one of those five star guys. I don't know what Denard's talking about. We wasn't five stars. That's you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> five of them things. Hold on. Hey. I wasn't, I wasn't, but I had every scholarship in the country. Hey, I had, he committed on his trip back yeah. to Alabama, if I recall correctly. Yeah. Hey, the um, nation can thank me. I'm the reason the quell came here. <laughs> oh, there we go. What'd you do? Back. What? what? You I don't even, the well, yeah, don't don't even talk, talk about that. Up to here. Don't even rehash that to quell Jackson. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> He finally apologized after like 30 years. Oh my God. I still laugh at that, that story. Dequell De De lived like a block from me. I still laugh at him about that story. Go ahead, Dequell. Oh, Let listen. her know what happened. That was the hardest decision I ever made, man. Oh my God. <laughs> uh -huh. I apologize, Locks. I apologize. You did, but it's a little late now. Locks recruited me so hard that year. And I didn't know anything about Maryland at that point. You know, being from Florida, you know, in my mind, it was either I go to Florida State or Florida uh, or, you know, UM. And when Maryland came around, you know, Locks was the first team to offer me a scholarship. And once that happened, you know, it was like a snowball effect. All the other teams started offering me, but Locks was the most consistent, the most uh, – it was like a it – was, it, was it was a friendship we developed. And you told me the truth. You know, EJ was there and this, that, and the other, that I had to earn my stripes. But uh, signing day, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. <laughs> I couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. it took me – I had to sleep on it, man. I had to sleep on it. Uh, <laughs> next morning he got the facts and uh, the rest has been history. But it, it was hard for me to make that decision. But to Day Day's point about culture, I can tell you this. I'm looking at a handful of guys right now that basically, you know, saw a young kid who was wild, who didn't really know how to be a pro, didn't mm. know how to be a teammate. I was all about myself. And I remember Madhu Williams – I had to go to his room and study just so, you know, he was like my father. He was like my big brother. Hey, 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 hey Quell, so didn't, didn't, was there. Didn't, you sleep, didn't you sleep in my common area? Man, I slept everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone had to help me out, man. But I noticed you guys, man, because I, I noticed was, I was about great. that was – that was the season, the Peach Bowl, or was it, or was it the Gator Bowl? Do not. Gator Bowl. Know what you're doing. <laughs> Listen, I, I had never flown before, Dick. I know what you're doing. <laughs> Can we put this on record? Can we put the? Go ahead, Dick. Go ahead, and tell your story. Oh no, nah, man! <laughs> you tell a Listen, story, man. Okay, so do you guys remember it was the Peach Bowl where you know we had some time before we had to report to uh, Atlanta? Do you guys remember me showing up maybe a day or two late? Yes. Do you guys remember that. Mm -hmm. I remember it. Oh, I never forget it. Oh, I laugh at it every day of my life. So this is a story. <laughs> this story. This is the short version of it. So my uncle's taking me to the airport, Tampa Airport. And you know me. This, I'm I'm a freshman. I really haven't you know flown all that much. The only time I flown was during the season. That was the only time in my life I ever flown. So I get to the uh, airport, and he looks at me. I look at him, I'm, and I tell him, "I was like, I can't do it." He was like, "What do you mean you can't do it?" I was like, "I cannot get on this plane." I think he's going to crash. <laughs> so I was so nervous. And he was like, listen, if you have bad, you know, a bad, you know, idea about this flight, then we're not doing it. We'll call free and we'll do whatever we got to do. I was like, well, let's go back home. I never got on the flight. Man. <laughs> and um, then when you, when you got there a couple days late, you couldn't go out and do nothing. And I remember I assumed that you was lying. I was like, oh, that's a good no. story. So what was you actually into? And you looked me dead in my eyes and said, me. I had a feeling. <laughs> I just, I just, <laughs> <laughs> stop laughing. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, so, in movie. terms of, you know, the culture and just the team mindset, when, you know, in 2003, you guys lose the two of the first three games of the season, how did you guys kind of all come back together to end up, you know, having one of the best seasons in Maryland football history? We just needed them to 
pick their quarterback, and that was Scotty McBee. Bro. Yeah, I think that was. But, you, but you said it in asking the question. We came together. That was the biggest thing. Yeah. We, we well, saw it writing on the wall, and we just made sure we, we hung no, together and got it done. Real. Let's keep it real. They <laughs> no, no, no. I'm going to keep it real. They was dancing right, on the QB. I'm they was dancing real. on the QB. Hey, hey, bro, a lot of times, the fact that you're funny because you was in the room, we leaned on number 20. Christopher. Not yet. Not yet. Rabbit, not yet. We yes, talking we, about Notre Dame. <laughs> we talking about Notre Dame. Talking about, she, said, she asked after the two-game losing streak. They, they, they said we going with McBee. No, so so – I'll take that one. Lyra. Yeah, take it. So my first start, you know, me coming from West Virginia, um, you know, first of all, that was Martin Walker coming out of high school. Walker tried to give me a punt. Um, I just wanted you on scholarship. I said, pretend hey, you're the punter. Let's just get you in the building. <laughs> wanted this man to punt? Just get me in the building. Well, no, no, no. We were out of quarterback scholarships, and I knew he punted, and so I sold Ron Vanderland and That's why you Ralph on, look, Bro. this dude can punt. Just get him in as a punter. <laughs> I was trying to everything I can to get him a scholarship. Yeah. Yeah. So that, you know, I did not know this. That's crazy. True story, Scott, right? School, Scott. He came on the snow – during the snowstorm, you came on an official visit, uh, uh, a yeah. snowstorm. It was you and uh, my guy who went to UCLA. Yeah, yeah. Matt, Matt. Now he's going to punt? <laughs> that was our plan, and we were sticking to it. Wow. I was ready to punt, kick extra points, do it, you know, do what I do That's best. Crazy. But you know, the problem was that year, uh, you know, that that Notre Dame game was my first start, and I like to forget <laughs> that game, of course. Um, we come home, we win against Akron, uh, then we lose against Florida State. Uh, we're one and two, and then we beat Eastern Michigan, maybe, and Wolford. I can't remember. Uh huh. But the turning point of that season was that trip to Morgantown. That angry was quarterback. Back angry West. quarterback. My first time going back to West Virginia, and that was a big, that was a big game for us. They might have been ranked in the country at that point in time. Um, yeah. We were three and two. Let's go. Uh, we were on our heels. And I remember that bus ride up to Morgantown. Um, this was, you know, the biggest game of my career, going back to see some of my old teammates, that other coach up there, Rich Rodriguez, of course, that we all know. Um, and, you know, bus trip. We had a three-hour bus trip up to Morgantown, and I was ready to just kind of chill, have my headphones on, and, you know, suitor telling jokes, and we're all in the back of the bus. And I remember – I said, get up, Steve. And pointed to me and said, Scott, come up here to the front of the bus. <laughs> so I come up to the front of the bus, and I, I'll never forget this. I sat in front of Rich. I sat in front of Suter, and I sat right next to Ralph Regan. And uh, <laughs> I remember this like it was yesterday. And he said, hey, we're not going to sleep on this bus ride. We're gonna, I'm going to quiz you. And so we went through that whole game plan. We went through the whole playbook. And he quizzed me from the moment we left College Park until we got into Morgantown, West Virginia. Three hours, he just grilled me and quizzed me. But I'll tell you what, uh, I was thankful for that because I was, I, I, I was never more prepared for a game than I was going into that uh, West Virginia game in Morgantown. And we ended up, you know, doing, handling our business and, and winning, winning by a big number. And that was really the turning point of our season I felt like the guys on this conference kind of you know got behind my back they were really supportive of me and we were rolling at that point in time and the season was history from there and you know it's pretty fair to say you know Scott was the last kind of you know standout Maryland football quarterback what was it like for you guys to you know play alongside him and what kind of I know we're talking about him a group text a little bit like what do you um what was it just like playing alongside of him? What did he kind of bring to the table that helped elevate this team? For me personally, um, ability. For me personally man, having Scott as my quarterback in high school, um, and you saw what he, what he did in high school. I mean, he was a grinder. He put up a lot of big stats. And then when he went to West Virginia, you know, all of us were happy for him. But when he transferred, it was, it was also a special thing because, you know, in high school I played wide receiver. And he was actually the quarterback on our team. <clears throat> just to just to know the guy and know the athlete that he is and the person. I mean, it, you know, it, it drove he drove the ship. Um, anything about uh, Scott McBride, If he goes and play golf, he goes and play basketball. He's a hell of a he's a hell, a hell of a competitor. And um, just knowing that he was on my team, he was the quarterback of our football team. I knew we always had a chance. Because Scotty wasn't going to leave anything on the table. He was going to compete until the end and uh, give his best effort. So, for me, knowing him from, from, from high school 
and then playing with him in college, I knew what type of guy we had every time we lined up. I would say, uh, I would say. Can I jump in real quick? So yeah, go ahead, Rich. I play with a bunch of different quarterbacks and stuff like that. You know, Scotty, if you can catch Scotty, you can catch anybody. Because Scotty, he had this, this nasty curve on the football. He was left-handed. And, like, if you didn't, if you weren't prepared, he'd knock your nose off straight up. And we played with, um, with uh, Hill the year before. And, and Hill, like, he was a great manager of the game. He had a great little dump off. But his ball didn't have a kind of zest that Scotty had. Am I right, Suter? Like, his thing, it, it – like it could come out, of, it could come out, uh, it could come out over top. Nasty <laughs> ball. <laughs> From the defensive side, we can all say Scotty had the most confident. Like you could say he was competitive. Yeah. He had yeah. confidence about himself. Yeah. Just made you be like, all right, we got this. Let's get it. Like he was sw- talk, trash talking one on ones. And you like, <laughs> well, he just had that. Like he had that confidence. Once he got it going, like he made, we all just believed. And that was the thing about all of us. Once one person believed, we all believe it's not one point where we could be down 20. Everybody's still hyped like we about to win this thing, and it just brought it together right after that game, man. I'll, fast, I'll, I'll, pick, I'll, I'll pick up on, on that. You know, when being in the huddle with Scotty, um, no moment was too big. Yeah. Like, Scotty's demeanor was cool, calm, and collected. Like, let's just go do it. And – when you're an offensive player at a skilled position or even a lineman and you see your quarterback with that type of demeanor, like, you know, nothing phases him. And you can add on that, you know, the talent and, and the arm talent, you know, and pretty much a deceptive runner because Scotty can scoot on you. You know, having yeah, future to jump off sides a few times. <laughs> <laughs> having that in the huddle, having that type of composure so in the huddle. Scott, tell this story about that time. Hey, Rick, can you, you shut up and let me finish? Ooh. Nah, man. We, 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 we let you talk for a long time, Pastor. So hey, Scott, it's, not, it's not my fault. I'm doing a walkthrough when, when uh, Coach Regan said he was going to choke your life out of you or something like that. Remember that? It was a, No, it was cover two drill. That was the best. Yeah, that was the best ever. Yeah, it was a walkthrough, though. Scotty, tell the story, please. Oh, no, Rich, yeah. really no, we were live. Bullets were flying, Rich. And I remember I threw late over the middle. I think I, I tried to throw it to you, Rich. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, read the wrong guy, threw it late over the middle, uh, almost got picked off. I remember in the huddle, I was looking over the sideline for the next play. And I remember Ralph walking in the huddle saying, you throw late over the middle one more time, and I'm going to choke you. And I remember I said, choke you until you die. Yeah, <laughs> Why? I, I kept it PG, so. But I, I remember the it's first real. I looked at was Rich, and his eyes were like this. Oh. And all I did was smile. I, I, I you know, I didn't think I didn't take it serious. I just smiled and I walked back in the huddle. And Rich, your eyes were like this. I just called the next play, and I think we scored on the next play. So, <laughs> without being Michael Jordan, the last dance where I, I got all the behind the scenes stories of it. The story behind the story was, was Scotty being our quarterback. All right. So, the reason I was trying to get Scotty to come to Maryland as a punter was because he was a winner. Scratch golfer, hit 400 in baseball, shoot the three and J you up, black, white, don't matter what color you are. Uh, was 135 pounds, but was a winner. He did that all through high school. And everything he, everything he got, he had to fight for. And knowing DeMatha, knowing him, I tried everything I can. Gray shirt him, bring him in in January, make him a punter. We brought him in on a late visit. So he, he decides because he didn't want to come in January. So And he had told us he was coming to Maryland in January to be a punter. And then West Virginia got wind of it, and they were looking for a quarterback. They came and got him and told him he can come now. And he chose to go to West Virginia as a true freshman. I want to say you started, what, three or four games after uh, Bulger got hurt? Yeah, three games. Three games as a true freshman. He played against Notre Dame. He played against these other teams. And this was the year before Ralph got there. Yeah. And so all of a sudden, Ralph comes to Maryland. Rich Rod goes to West Virginia. And Scotty and Rich Rod were in a match. And uh, I'll never forget Kathy, his mom, who – 
I'm doing my recruiting process. I get to know everybody. Called and basically said, look, this West Virginia thing is not working for Scott. I want him to come home. I said, well, look, we got new head coach. We, I don't, we ain't got no scholarships. She said, he'll walk on. I said, well, all right, good. And I can remember that spring. Uh, I hooked him up with J.D., John Donovan, because the offense, the playbook was like this thick. And I can remember saying, you know, Ralph was like, this guy can't quarterback a good boys and girls club team and all those other things early. But he got with J.D., John Donovan, knew Ralph's offense better than anybody. Uh, that spring picked it up, and then the rest is history. That, But he, he's the winner. And that was the reason we fought hard to get him the first time. And then uh, he went and played as a true freshman at West Virginia. And I think what we saw, uh, as I say, the last true franchise quarterback, and no disrespect to some of the other quarterbacks that have been here. You know, C.J. Brown was a really good quarterback. But the last guy to lead us to some great, great times, uh, it wasn't a surprise to some of us. So uh, that's the story behind the story. And in terms of just the talent on the team and how hard you guys worked, I mean, the team in 2002 had eight ACC first-team selections. There's so many guys on this call who went on to play in the league. How did you guys, you know, compete every day, practice with each other every day to really help push each other to, you know, be your best and reach those levels? Oh, let, let me jump in and tell you here, talk about competing every day. <laughs> Stephon. Every day. Every single day, me and Stefan went at it. Every single day. If we did one-on-one -on -one drills, every single day, you seen people around because they knew we were going to get after it. But that's, that's what it was. I mean, some, some days in, um, in practice, that's what made the games easy because we would go so hard. And pra our practice would be so hard. And I, I remember the days we had to put on those damn uh, those knee braces mm -hmm. uh, where we had to tape them up. So we're out there in, in training camp, um, you know, with these knee brace on, and we got these hard practices. Some of them was, you know, a lot of the practices were live. I mean, we had we had one on one tackling drills um, often, you know. So by the time we got to the games, it was it was uh, it was easy. It, it was, it was like, easy. They taught us how not to lose. So like, I mean, like even now in coaching, like. Man, it was so many times we fought offense versus defense, and it was like all love at the end of the day. It was just everybody just kept pushing. It wasn't no, hey, brother and the personal pushed each other. And everybody was like, here's the standard. Either you get in or the next person's up. And that was just fact. Bro, I'm just going to add in. I'm going to add into the, to that and say that um, everything that we did was game speed. Just from the walkthroughs and especially in practices, one thing that I, re I realized, man, was how much – the speed of practice, how fast it was, because when we got to the game, there was not differentiating between game speed and practice speed because our bodies were so accustomed and so programmed to going fast at all times that it was an easy transition for a lot of us. And then you, you can fast forward to, to moving on to the NFL. You know, having that um, foundation is, is a real reason why a lot of the guys were successful in the league. You know, because we learned it from Maryland. You know, you learn how to go full speed from from start to finish. You know what I mean? So, game tempo. Game tempo. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring, bring a bunch of guys Coach, with I'm egos. Coach White in here real quick. Coach White, talk about your uh, your battles with Big Candy Randy up front. I mean, I, I know personally. <laughs> um, you know, we had the best defense some people say the ACC. I'm going to say in the country. I mean, we no had no the, we had the no best, doubt, for best real. defenses in the country. Oh, that went so far for us as an offense to, to have to go to battle with you guys all day, every day. I mean, day. that helped me tremendously. You know, picking out reads, you guys with disguised coverages. I'd know where to go with the ball. Game day was easy for me. Um, and it, it just goes to the fact that you guys were so good on the defensive side of the ball that, you all know, day. that's why we were able to put so many points on the board every Saturday. So, I give the credit to you as a defense. Uh, Todd, you want to jump in here and talk about some of that? Yeah, I was, I was just thinking to myself. I remember as a young guy playing the offensive line and going against Chris Jenkins every day. Y'all remember oh. Chris went on oh. NFL, successful football career. And just thinking about how happy I'm going to be when I don't have to block him in practice. 
Chris Leaves and in walks Randy Starks and just but don't forget don't forget EJ behind him, Todd. Don't forget EJ yeah, behind him. Yeah, I was going to leave out Randy then getting to the next level. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, in the you know the 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 pre practice was probably the worst part. Yes. And we we get out there before stretch uh, even started and had to you know live inside drill centers and guards against the tackles and, and nose guards. It was walk through, man. That was all walk through, guys. No walk through. That was, that was live. That was live. Start the period over live. Let's get it. One guy, one guy that doesn't get talked about a lot. You know, we got to give some props to Gary Black. Heck Facts. yeah. Our Facts. defense coordinator. All, right, all day. All day. Hey, well, let's talk about that coaching staff in general. That whole coaching staff was unbelievable. Whoa. They were wild men. They were crazy. <laughs> but but even go back to like we said Maryland was trash. If you look at the staff that Vandy the staff, jeez, you no, know I'm saying like we said Maryland was trash. If you look at the look at the staff from Vandy from '99, head coaches, right? Like, like I'm just saying, like the, the the whole staff, man, it was all star. We've been coached by so many great guys. Like at the end of the day, nice. they develop cultures, and I mean it's it's so crazy how I would say that they also developed us. Where nowadays when you get guys, everybody's thrown into the fire. Those guys have been around and had enough experience to develop each one of us and gave each one of us a role and a purpose so there was no bickering amongst each other. And I wanted to ask you guys about, you know, two specific games of a season. You know, we'll get in the, the Peach Bowl in a little bit, but just, you know, the game, one of the biggest games of the season before that against number 14 NC State, you know, a game where you guys are down 14 in the second half. What was key to that comeback for you guys and how big was that um, – for you guys and, you know, having the confidence to finish out the rest of the season. Leela, I, NC State and Phillip Rivers have never beaten Maryland. Facts. That's for sure. Facts. Hey, Boy, sure. Oh, facts. Never. Have never Take beaten Maryland. And honestly, what you say about that, Mike? Our, our defense. I, I still give them hell. Still, our, to this day. Our defense. Uh, you know, we were very good offensively because we have really good offensive coaches. But our defense, man. Ooh. Our our defense was the best in the country. Hand we tell you, I didn't start to my junior year. So we had to be good. <laughs> hey, let me let me try man, let me try man real quick because in that game in that game I remember Nick I remember Nick missing that extra point and I watched our entire defense unbothered unfazed unbothered. Like a beat of sweat. They walked up. Nick was like, "Keep your head up. Keep be ready. Up. We gonna get your ball back." And Madu, I believe, it was even Newell Leroy. Hits him and Clinton so hard his children are still feeling Leroy. That. Like dude was asleep. Dude was holding the ball and there wasn't no ball. And then and then all of a sudden we get back out in the field like unbothered. Because like like Bruce said, we have probably the best defense in the country. And the and the paper and the, the press will never say that. But we went out and then we went to the, the Peach Bowl with our scout team defensive line. And just beat the like Brandy goes down on the first play. We beat the brakes off of these dudes. Like what need like like we were supposed to. But that that NC yeah, State yeah. that <laughs> NC State that NC, the NC State game was a defensive win. Oh yeah, all day, hands down. It was a defensive win. Leroy yeah. Ambush. And they they gave Tappy Black Phillip, came through hard. You guys talking about a different way, oh, Leroy. <laughs> yeah, Philip had no. Philip had no. Oh, we need the ball oh, back. Traumatic brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got, got y'all mixed back. up, man. That's y'all talking about the wrong. No, but we needed it. All they had to do was run the clock out. Was that the same one? A, no, no, that was the home game. That was the home game. That was the home, that was the home game. game. Home game. Home home game. Home home game. Got y'all confused. That was. My bad, yeah, I got it confused. That was the one when Coach Vasesi called me and Big Gip. We're gonna win the game. Which one we talking about? Homecoming. 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 I was just sitting here thinking to myself. Yeah. Actually, remember all these plays? I don't remember all these plays. Who was down? Who was down like two scores? And the defense kept kept the game the game close, and that's when Scotty B came through. I think we scored two touchdowns. At the end of the fourth quarter, some shit like that? Yeah, yeah. but if we're going to go the last play of the game to set Nick up for the field goal. Nobody knows this, but I forgot to send Steve in motion on that last play. Oh, I jump over, and I'm about to say hike, and all of a sudden Steve's running full speed at me because he realizes that I forget to send him in motion. Then he gives a guy a move, runs a corner route, and I just threw it up. I knew exactly where he was going to be. And then the catch on top of it, to tip right. That was bananas. That was bananas. When did you do the quarterback sneak? When was the quarterback sneak or the uh, the replay? That was that game. That, that was that, that game. Uh, that was, that was, yeah. I'm saying, was that the one to tie it or the one to bring us in one score? That was the tie. That was early on. That was first half, I think. 45 gut B. At the end. What was the score at the end? 
Wow. Where do I get the, where do I get the film for all these damn games? I don't remember. Nowhere. Uh, I remember it's you it's lost it's this a, one, so we, I can Max. We it's do a have them. We have them archived, so. Somebody should share their screen and you, play You block, block. You can't even get those games, man. I got them. I got boxes full of – I got every cut up, every VHS tape. Yeah, dude. Trust me. Buy I'll, I'll, be, I'll be at your front I got, door. Bro. I got coaches' copies of everything. Bring us to golf. I, I, mean, I haven't seen a lot of these games been in a long time. Mm-hmm. But you got to bring Nick the kick in because he made the twenty six year twenty six yard field goal at the end after missing the extra point. Talk a little bit about that, Nick. Yeah, Nick, talk to us. Did I miss an extra point? In that yeah, game? Uh, an extra uh, point. Short <laughs> memory. That was the one. That was the away game. He missed the extra point. It was the, away, yeah, the home game. No, he was straight home game. It was the away game. It was the one extra point I missed in uh, that year. And I remember Madhu came up to me and said, I'm going to get that ball back. And Leroy got it back. But Madhu knew uh, no, that that was going to happen. I, I knew that if I missed that, I was going to be left there. Was- <laughs> 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 Drop your luggage off. Uh, how about the last kickoff, though? The last yeah. kickoff. The, the wasn't play, like, wasn't the play, like inside the five or something stupid like that? Well, uh, we kicked it off. <laughs> yeah. It's still going on. Mm, God, I froze. Scott. Frozen in time. Frozen <laughs> thoughts. He froze. That was a good game, though. That probably had to be our best win of the year. Other the than – Yeah, for it. sure. And then the bottles start coming over, over our head from the stands. It was yeah. Oh, dude, that was crazy. Oh, yeah. That was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And then with the, you know, you guys then, you know, go on the, go to the Peach Bowl. Just what was that experience like being able to that was, you know, that be a was part the of the That was the EJ. Yeah, did you guys get a lot of free Chick-fil-A? Uh, they, no, we went to for six months. Black Fest and Tyson Chick-fil-A. Hooters in Atlanta. <laughs> we all went down. This whole, the whole team got together and was like, listen, coach. We want no. We appreciate the free no money, pads. but we want no, no more. Pads. I will not no eat Chick Fil A until this day because of the Peach Bowl. <laughs> they said it now. Again, yeah, we're gonna change it, guys. We thought we made an impact. The next morning, we wake up, chicken biscuits for breakfast. Chicken biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> I love Chick-fil-A. Like, nah. I <laughs> remember, remember that free bag of shit, though? They had everything in it. Little cameras, everything. That everything. Bag, everything. Bag, everything. DVD everything. players. I think we got a DVD for us. Like yeah, we did. Head. We had DVD, couple of DVDs. Uh, what was it, Rush Hour? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, remember they had, the, they had the room in the hotel for free Chick-fil-A in there. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that was hilarious, dude. No. The biggest thing about the Peach Bowl that we all enjoyed was no one knew the year before we go to the Orange Bowl. We're like, yo, we're going bowling. We're all excited. We think about that. The fun, the coaches is turned up. They got the Orange Bacardi. Aww. And we had three days. Like, oh, we're going days. Going I was having three hey, days. We have been dying at Barry. Those University. were developmental practices. We had developmental <laughs> practices. <laughs> <laughs> we kept, the, we kept the freshmen out to develop them. Y'all would have not been playing with a team. <laughs> If they did that to us again, the way our team was tight, we would have walked out on the we day. Out. <laughs> we, went down to, we went down to the Orange Bowl. I remember joking with Coach Ray while we'd be stretching and saying, dude, I've been here a week. I ain't seen any sand. This is this ain't fun. It was terrible. But the Peach Bowl was fabulous. Lila, the best part about the Peach Bowl was after the win. Um, yeah. I think we got stuck on the buses or close to it. Like it was close to – New Year's or something, and then walking <laughs> into that hotel after beating an SEC powerhouse like Tennessee, and just uh, things got really dark that night. <laughs> I can remember. I can I remember. Saw the story uh, over a group text. Yeah, I can remember uh, living up to my running back. Do uh, you remember the the challenge I had with Chad? Uh, yes, oh, I remember that. A what classic. Would, what would happen in our last game is. We had, we had some tough fullbacks during my time. Matt Kalapinski, we had Bernie Fiddler. We Breezy. Had Breezy. Breezy. Yeah. Chad. Chad. I mean, and I can remember just Chad uh, and I after that game. I, I tried to live up to my uh, challenge. It had, a lot, had, to do, had to do a lot of tequila because mm-hmm. he was playing as a senior. And, uh, but the, the best part of that game was seeing the faces of our fans, especially after the disappointment of the Orange Bowl, uh, as great of the season as it was, we didn't like the way it ended, 
to come back the next year and do it again, and but this time actually finish the job and finish the deal. Um, that to me was probably the culmination of it because you got to see a lot of these guys that paid some some hard prices in terms of going through the rebuild that we went through under the previous staff. And then with Ralph, that was year two for him. It was just great for these guys to be able to really feel what success was all about as a football player for Maryland. And uh, to me, that was the rewarding part. That was a great time in that. I sit on that. that. That hotel celebration after was just amazing. And this is going to be for the fans. <laughs> to, be, to get the fans to come out there, it was like we were partying with all the fans in the hotel. Right. One of my favorite yes. moments. I'll never, Cheers, I you walked to the lobby. Yeah, I'll I never forget out. this, right? I'm standing there with my mom and my dad and my girlfriend, who's now my wife. And this woman walks up to me with her man, and she pulls out a thong with my name stitched in it and asks me to sign it. Wow. <laughs> I, looked, so I looked at her man. I looked at her man real quick, and I was like, "Are you okay with this?" And he was like, "Yeah." And then I looked. I looked at my mom. I was like, "Yo, ma, are you okay with this?" And she was like, "Sure." And then I looked at my girl. I was like, "Are you all right with this?" He was like, "Yeah." So I signed that thing. I was like, "Hey." And then, and then, like eight years later, I'm golfing. I pay. I hand this guy behind the desk my credit card to pay for my golf. He looks at my name. He says, "Hey." You play for Maryland, right? I said, yeah. He said, you signed my friend's underwear back in the day. I said, oh, my God. <laughs> wow. So if they watching, I remember that. <laughs> How about, uh, I wish, I wish Trans was on because Trans took care of us down there. Yo, yeah, he did. Yes, he did. Yeah, he did. They got me, uh, they got me hey, in trouble hey, yet hey, again. Listen, with listen you know, Steve. Steve. Hey, Steve, you got me in trouble our last Zoom. Don't do it this time, okay? <laughs> okay. You got me in trouble. No, you just keep it PG, all right? <laughs> no, Jafar, it was Jafar and Latrez. They got me in trouble with Coach Friesian because they messed up. I forget what they did, but they messed up and Coach Friesian cut their curfew. And I, they got in my room and they got me all gassed up. They're like, Sue, you got to call Coach Friesian and see if you can get our curfew lifted. And I'm like, fine, I'll do it. So I call up Coach Friesian. I make you know up me? some excuse that they got to let Latrez and Jafar come out with us because we don't know the city. Latrez knows the city, and we're going to be unsafe if we don't have him escorting us around. And Friedrich was like, man, click. Just hang up on me. I was like, hey, that ain't work. Fridge. Hey, what about, what about Justin? Hey, Fridge didn't check her. You hear me? What did he say? Dude, I say, what about Justin Duffy? He bought yeah. out. He bought out, he bought out for real. He bought out. Hey, uh, what happened? What happened to our D line? But oh, don't forget. Hey, shout out to Tosin and Landon too because they showed up in that mix too and they bought out. What happened with our uh, starting our starting four? Our D line. Jimmy got sent home. Jimmy got sent home. <laughs> no, no, no. They thought they sent Shimmy home. Remember? Yeah, no, he stayed. He stayed. stayed. He stayed. He later. He you know, stayed. As we're pulling off to go to practice, guys. Yeah, yeah Shimmy stayed. Because you remember he had – never mind. I got a box. He's a PG. <laughs> PG, no. PG, PG. Shimmy married one of my god sisters. He still calls Ralph when his ring. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool. <laughs> That's terrible. Oh, man. Where's oh, Davey and Brian at? He's still in Maryland. I talked to him like maybe a month ago. He's still in Maryland. Exactly. Should be still be out there in DC. <laughs> yeah, I forgot to say yeah. Hey, but that game was um was a great game because not only did the D line was down, but if you remember the game vividly, the uh, Tennessee was very high powered and it loved to take deep shots. Mm -hmm. Coming into that game, the whole game plan from Gary Blackney was do not let them get no big plays and. I just remember that was the instructions that we all had in the back four. But we knew the percentages. They, Ralph, again, if we eliminate the big play, I mean, it's, it's the same thing every week, but particularly that game, eliminate the big plays, our chances of winning dramatically increases. And I remember the first series, we knew the deep ball was coming, and everybody on the sideline was yelling, telling us to get back, and the shots, whatever, I think it was shots. And once we were able to settle down after that, we knew we had a chance in that game. 
So I was re-watching this game the other day, and I think one of the plays that stood out to me, uh, you know, Karom, you had that interception. You returned 54 no, yards no, for the touchdown. No. Uh, how big was that play for you guys, and how cool was that to watch? I don't know about that part. I do know EJ had announced the game. I remember Nick Blondet was a monster. To the crib. Yeah, unblockable. The only thing that was important about that far, and then, Le- and then Leon put pressure on Leon ball too. to make the screen, you know, work. But the thing about – only reason I cared about that part was I got clowned early in the year against Duke. So then that game, I went – and when I scored, I was going to just do something. And soon, here's how Ralph is. I just scored a touchdown to put us ahead. I come to the sideline. You do that You do that again, I'll take your ass out the goddamn game. Like, that's all I remember about that touchdown. But I, I don't know what it was momentum-wise. I don't remember that. But I just know, like, to me, honestly, EJ, man, like, he killed that game. Killed that e- game. EJ, EJ, that was the best single game I ever saw about, out of any defensive player mm-hmm. playing linebacker in college. I, I don't know, like, he had 22 or 23 tackles. And every time you looked up, EJ was around the ball, he was in the backfield. Every single time. And – he just became unblockable, man. I, I, I still to this day talk about e, you know, EJ being one of the most underrated college football players of all time. Like I don't. Ooh, think who like underrated sure. him? Who underrated him? He when you talk about e, like because his pro his like pro career didn't go as long. It didn't match everything that he did in, like in college oh. before EJ got hurt. EJ was just on another planet. Right. You know what I'm saying? Listen, like Cylon, he knew they were better the than they did. Listen, that 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 that, bro, that brother, that game, EJ was first. one of the most instinctive, the most instinctive, instinctive man. Instinctive. Yes. The ball was and he was so smooth with it. I, mean, and, and, I remember watching that game on the side. I didn't sit down anytime the defense was out there because I wanted to yeah. watch how one easy, is, EJ, EJ made the game. And you know, the quell, the quell, you didn't skip a beat. You didn't skip the quell, You didn't skip a beat when uh, when he had to come in. I thought you had the same talent and speed. And, and, hey. I was going to say like, yeah. <laughs> I learned a lot. Sue didn't say nothing. Like, yeah. oh, no. <laughs> oh, this, this is that fine. This is that fine. I say, well, you did not skip a beat. Like, when I, I saw EJ play, and I saw his fluid motion, how he really grabbed taking the ball. The quote, like, you hopped in. I was like, this guy, I, either he learned from EJ watching him, or he, no. he already had it. I was, I was, I was, no. I was going to, I was going to bring that up a little earlier. You know, when we talk about talent level. And having to go up against, you know, the EJ Hendersons and, you know, DeQuell and 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 Aaron Thompson and Marlon, who was a freak. Dude, when EJ left, it was like having EJ 2.0 Ooh. when DeQuell stepped in. Nice. I, I agree. It was it was EJ nice. 2.0. And I you agree. can tell that DeQuell either watched. A, 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 a hell of a lot of EJ, but it was literally no drop, no drop off. Well, None. This, Zero. This is what like pa- pass pro, I still didn't want to go against DeQuell. Bring it. Nobody wanted to go against EJ. I mean, you just did it anyway. And EJ, for his size, he didn't bull rush. Oh. Mm-hmm. For his size, he, I mean, he, he worked every last tool in the toolbox you know so that talent to be able to bring all those guys together and and have that much talent on that team man when you think about it now you know, 18 years later it's like it crazy, damn we we, no were, drop we were special yeah. no drop off I'll tell you this well, about like, EJ that what really took my thought process about how I played the game to another level when he told me imagine if you're the running back you know, mm-hmm. the game with the running back. Watch the running back steps, and that's why he was able to, you know, be so mm-hmm. great in traffic. And once I started asking questions, we started watching film. He took the time to help me. And so yeah. it was my opportunity, you know, I, I did the best I could at it. But a lot of my success in college um, definitely is direct correlation. I'll take it a step further, Quell. And you know, you know, just as much, just as many, as many times you watched us run inside and outside zone. Mm-hmm. Not only were you asking your, you know, your senior linebacker, yeah, I was asking you, you step across that line and come straight to me, like, dude, like, how are you doing this? What are you seeing? How are you able to cut it all the way back? What are you looking at? And that's what made you special. You weren't, you, 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 you yearn for information. You know what I'm saying? And not only were you able to receive it, you were able to do something with it, like. You had the physical tools, but we all know football is a is a seventy percent mental game, thirty percent physical. 
And Quell, that's why I say it wasn't a drop off when EJ was gone because you stepped right in, bro. And well, Tootie, that the rest goes was history. Us, guys, again, who we were nowadays, a kid sitting behind EJ, deucing up and they transferring. Or mm. someone like EJ isn't willing to build up Quell because he worried about his spot. But that's but think, of, think about it from this perspective, Carone. Think about the guys that was in your room our two, five, and six seasons. You had Sean Forte, who was an absolute monster, probably one of the best safeties to ever put on a Maryland uniform. You, you had uh, Brent Boggs. You had Renard Cox. All these older guys weren't – Sanders. Uh, they weren't not giving you information. Like, I, I had the same thing. I was in a room full of seniors and juniors, and they were willing to pour into you because at some point in time, you were going to be the next man up. That's what we built then, and that's what we know Lox is going to produce now. Where do we, I, I know where I learned it from. I know where I learned it from. I look at it from this perspective, like from, from being a DB and being in the secondary and the guys that's, that's in this call, uh, Madhu, Karome, and Dominique were some of the smartest players no doubt about I've it. ever played with. Mm -hmm. right? Like all of, us had, working. all of us had a certain skill set, and what happened was they put us in position to have success. Mm -hmm. Madhu didn't miss a beat. Karome didn't miss a beat, and Karome was always smart. Karome was always ahead of him. Meek was always ahead of everything uh, the offense was doing. And I give a lot of credit to those guys, all right, just from my standpoint, because they gave me – they kind of molded me into my second career, all right? Mm. Quill, well, you were one of those guys that kind of molded me into that second career because I wasn't as talented as those guys were. Never was, all right? But they taught me something about the mental aspect and how to prepare that helped me go moving forward. And, I, you know, I give you all a lot of credit – for where, what I'm doing now. I've never told y'all that, but I really appreciate it. I appreciate I appreciate that credit. Wait, about? But what about me? How good am I? How good was I? <laughs> Want to tell me how good I was? Wow. Uh, you Just let me know. I mean, guys, I don't know. Was I good? Was I any good? And you were know Lyman don't get no <laughs> credit. I, I, I was decent. Hey, 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 hey we only average 220 on the ground yeah. and 220 in the air. We don't get that credit, though. That's okay, though. How many, how, many <laughs> cheese sticks, how many cheese sticks did you get in 01? Balanced. Balanced. Oh, in 01? Yeah. I mean, I mean, oh, they, they came on a regular because, you, you know, were, boy, You were rewarded. Make yeah, no mistake about it. They came on a regular. They came on a regular. And you were going to games all the time. Huh? What'd you say? I don't remember any of the What I what I miss out on? Oh uh, yeah, I didn't, <laughs> yeah, I didn't get down on the old line lobbying to get some love because you guys never get love. Never. Two time, never. Two never time ever first ever. team all ACC top. Team, all all Steve did was ass whoopers at Madden. You would do five wide set and then throw the ball short all up the field. <laughs> Come to his, your uh your your room and always whoop my ass at Madden. That was it. I ran the campus, man. Don't come see oh, me. Cut it out. Cut it out. Cut it out. Wow. Meek, wow. wow. you pretty good? Next question. <laughs> <laughs> next, next question, please. Well, I don't want to take up too much of everyone's time, so I figured we'd end uh, with a fun segment. Uh, I want to hear some more stories for you guys. Now, uh, Coach Locks, I think, has a lot of more swag than anyone his age I know. So I have to hear about, like, my some age, stories what about – What that mean? <laughs> you old, my age. age. <laughs> you old, Coach. I'm recruiting some of their kids now, so that is – I'm just saying, you have, you have, like, a lot of swag. I want to know what Coach Locks was like back in the day. Hey, what goes on in our meeting room stays in our meeting room. He would cuss room. a lot. Really <laughs> Rule number one. Without cussing. Can't talk about it. Sorry, I can't give you that. Our, our players, <laughs> running backs learn rule number one really quickly because my first meeting I would have with them was, don't come in telling me that you're homesick or you don't want to play anymore because you found out your girlfriend is now dating your best friend. <laughs> <laughs> you're here at camp and your best True friend that ain't playing football now is dating your girlfriend. And I'm being yeah. PG-13 with it. But I told them from day one, just get over all that. 
high school love and girlfriend stuff don't come in and all of a sudden whenever they come in and say I don't know if I love the game. I, I, I don't know if it's. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Who, they you know, found who out their girlfriend. Who are you talking about? Who are you, who are you, who are you talking about? Like I, Bruce. I'm curious. Who are you I introduced about? you to your wife, Bruce. All right, Bruce. You I, I did more than just recruit. Guy. I did more than just recruit. I introduced guys to wives. I like Bruce so, would dislike that. Like coach, I know did, the one thing that he did, he still does to this day, is like coaching football. He was able to be like you could talk to him, and you felt like you can have a conversation outside of football. He gonna rip you. He gonna come at you. He gonna like he gonna clown you. But because you felt comfortable, and you built a relationship with him. You knew it was out of love. I I I I'll I, I, I tell you I'll tell you one story that I can tell you. I know oh one. I think um I think I might have had a hamstring injury or something like that going in training camp. You were injured, uh, DB. And, hey, cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you never, you're never injured. <laughs> He's out. Shots fired. Hey. Yikes! Hey. Uh, Bruce, all I know is when he got injured. Heart, all I know when he got injured, Chris Downs was the next uh, first team uh, All ACC. This player. is true. Then he got injured. But I, I, I will say, um, it's all Todd White. Is it your stomach or your heart, Bruce? I know. Oh, come on, Rich, Rich. Rich. Stop! Rich. Got a million of them. Get out of the play. Stop it. <laughs> Rich. This, this, this is coming from a guy who catches a 60-yard bomb and fumbles on the one-yard line. Oh. Oh. The defense made up for it, Locks. The defense made up for it. Cut it out. Hey. Mute him, Lila. Mute him. The next year, though, Rich. What, was the Peace Bowl year the year you told Ralph you're in the yard? Was that this year? Or was that, that the year? Which that was, was that? Year. That was the Peace Bowl year. During winter workouts. That was the winter workouts. Yup. I remember that. That was the was Bernard. <laughs> I left yeah, that was the day. Day. I left that was, that night. seared in my skull to this day. And, and we were we that no, was the we best of all time. We were ready to not do winter workouts. Like we everybody wanted to not do shit. <laughs> hey, we so were, we were hoping he gave us a different answer so Come we could on. go back and go to sleep. It was three thirty in the morning. Blame Scotty. Everybody came to our room. Scotty McBride all night. Hey, they they came to me in Rich's room. They came to me in Rich's room. Day Day came to me in Rich's room. You see this shit? No, 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 no. Me and Rich are sweet. That's after Scotty, Scotty McBone. <laughs> oh, shit. I came to my room. The story. And Scotty said, Did you watch ESPN? Da, 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 the ticker. Da, 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 da. I didn't right see across, it. Man. And Scotty said that Ralph Regan is on a plane going to Tampa Bay to get the head coaching job. So mm-hmm. he, Scotty got me riled up. Mm-hmm. So once, once Scotty got me riled up, I, I, I went over to all the people that I knew that mm-hmm. would ride with me. So I went over to the nice. nice. and I went over to uh, I went over to Rich Room and amongst other people. And I said, "Look, this is what we're doing." Mm-hmm. And I said, "When we walk into that Coliseum tomorrow, when we walk in that Coliseum, don't none of y'all take y'all damn clothes off. Nobody get dragged." <laughs> yeah. I remember that. Mm-hmm. I, said, I said, "You stay in y'all winter uh, jackets. This is a- and everything else." And I said, "This is a revolt." I said, I will confront him. And it the funniest thing, I was scared shitless. I know you were. I was sitting right next to you. I know you were scared. I was scared That's shitless. awesome. And I remember when we used to walk into the Coliseum in the front door and the coaches would come in the back door. Mm-hmm. And, and I remember when Ralph, Locks, and all of them walked in the door, I was like, oh, shit. But, 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 Day Day, do you – do you remember the way Ralph looked? He looked scared as shit. He, 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 he went was pale. nervous. Yes. He went pale. No. But the fun, the funny part is when all of us got up from that side because we all used to sit down on that wall because we, mm-hmm. you know, we regretted when the workouts. Now we came to work, but I remember, I remember when I got up and everybody started walking, and then I was like, "Okay, fuck!" I said, "I can say what I want to say." You got you you got you got your crew with you. Hey. So so when y'all walk with me, it gave me confidence. I didn't say much. I just asked them a question. I said, "Are you in you out?" Uh, obviously, man. We seen you on this TV. Um, you talk. Uh, you, all called, the- you called him out on what he said when he took no, no, the job. No, it's like, I yeah. I said you talk about being all in. I said you yep. talk. About yep. Mm-hmm. So I said I got a simple question for you. Are you in or you out? Yep. And in, in, in a typical Ralph fashion. 
I'm in. Said, let's party. I'm in. Get your ass on the line. Get on the line. <laughs> <laughs> that they made hundreds of millions of dollars on. Like, <laughs> we're like, fuck. Like, we're like, God damn it. <laughs> hey, we did, we did, we did the mat drill and the up downs better than we ever did in our lives. Hey, hey, oh, hey. Timberland. A question that I wanted to ask. I wanted to ask Locks, like, Ooh. what was it like in your transition from being with Vandy to now in a, with a new coach and, and, and Ralph Friesian? Like, how was that for you as a coach? Yeah. You know, I, I think the big thing for me was, so Ron Vanderlyn was a defensive head coach. Um, he came to Maryland as the uh, head coach after being a defensive coordinator at Northwestern where they built a program – very similar to Maryland at that time, and took him to the Rose Bowl. And so he came with a lot of accolades. And I do give him a lot of credit, man. You know, I always say as a head coach, I take a little bit from all the head coaches I ever worked for. And the thing I took from, uh, you know, Vandy was his ability to evaluate talent. And you just look across the board, and, you know, Dominique said it earlier, There, there's a few five stars on here, like, I had to fight my ass off to get Randy Starks that came to us in Penn State, and that was really one of the first battles we won against Penn State. I can remember Sean Merriman committing to Maryland. I mean, this dude committed to Maryland, going into his senior year and could have went anywhere. and Didn't even take a visit. Like, it's not even like that anymore. But Mm -hmm. he also had a uh, network, his coach Bill Johnson, J.C. Pinckney. I mean, he had a support system that was needed here. And um, like and Dominique, like Dominique said, but there's a bunch of stories on here. Caron could have went to Notre Dame. Uh, all these stories are just great. But the transition from Ralph, uh, from Bandy to Ralph to me was going from uh, evaluating talent to creating a culture and a standard for how you need to play the game to win. And uh, Madhu hit it on the head. He talked about the pace of it. It wasn't even the pace of it, but the intensity of it. I mean, mm-hmm. I can remember as a uh, – I was a young assistant at the time, and I had flashcards, and me and James Franklin would get in the office at 5 in the morning before he got there, and formation flashcards. We had all the r l formations, and I'm one of those guys. I never – I never want to get caught, you know, not knowing my shit. I took mm-hmm. pride in that piece of it. And so – um Ralph challenged you mentally. And I'm going to just tell you like this. I use this story all the time, having worked for Ralph and Nick Saban. Um, when you win, we won 30 games in three years in the Ralph. But every Monday, it was like you lost the game. It was like mm. it didn't matter. The intensity, mm. of, the intensity when you walked in that building was like the next one. Like it was, mm. You never could be complacent. You never could get caught not prepared. You always mm. had to have answers. So it was just a different intensity. You know, with Ron Vanderlyn, it was a family, laissez-faire. He was sharp. He was very intellectual. I mean, he could sell the moon. Um, political. He real political. But but with, uh, Van, uh, but with Ralph, it was just such an intensity that you never could relax. It was always, you better bring your A game or you're going to get eaten up and spit out. So how, how does how does that affected you at every last stop that you cuz you've been with you know with Zook and of course, you know, we only mentioned, you know, New Mexico, but you've been, you know, with some pretty good right. coaches. How well, is think, that? I think the big thing for me though is as a coach and we got a bunch of guys on this, you got Karom, you got Jafar, you got Denard, all guys that have coached at this level. You've got some guys that coach high school like you have, Bruce, and some of you other guys that have helped train quarterbacks like Scotty McBee. Um, for me, it's it, you have to coach your personality, and I've always been big on uh, – I hope, and I, maybe you guys can attest to it, I, I hope I'm and the same guy I was then. Obviously, I got a lot more things on my plate and a few more uh, issues to deal with, but from a personality standpoint – I'll never be Ralph Friesen because that, to me, coming in and – I mean, you can't be mad 365 days a year. Like, it's mm-hmm. hard. Even when mm-hmm. I'm pissed off, it takes me, like, 20 minutes and I'm ready to crack a joke. But this mm-hmm. dude was mad every day, all day, <laughs> because he had the fight. I mean, he fought his whole career to get an opportunity to be a head coach. Mm-hmm. And he had the skins in the game. He was successful as a coordinator. And I could just remember talking to him and the frustration of never getting an opportunity. And when he finally got it, mm-hmm. he wasn't going to lose and he wasn't going to fail at it. 
He had that, he had chip. He had a chip on his shoulder. shoulder. And to me, that's the same thing. I'm six and forty as a head coach, and people want to know why Maryland hired me. Well, I got a chip on my shoulder too. Like I, you know, I haven't had a job like Maryland. I had to take over an interim. I had to go to New Mexico and, and deal with some stuff there. But everywhere else, as an assistant, I've helped build programs. So I got a little chip on my shoulder. So yeah, I've taken a lot from Ralph, from Ron Vanderlinden, from Nick Saban, from Ron Zook, and you take all those philosophies and organizational structures and you make them your own, but you, you gotta be your personality, man. And, uh, you know, hopefully- I, th- I, th- I think, you know, locks to your credit and you've heard me say this before um, and, and just being a coach, you know, I think that you gotta do three things as a coach. You gotta be able to teach, you gotta be able to motivate and you gotta be able to inspire. Right. And one thing, one thing that, you know, I took from you, and, and, and what you have done in your career, even with me being on the offensive side of the ball when I was in college, you was a great teacher, right? Then you had the ability to motivate young men not only to be better than what they deemed who, who they saw they were. You, you made them, you motivated them to be uh, better than what they were. And then you inspired them to be something, right? And, and you inspired them to be greater than, than a talent. You inspired them to be better than what they were on and off the field. And I think that, you know, as a coach, and we talked about culture, but if you can teach, motivate, and inspire young Mm -hmm. men to be the best that they can be, they have the avenue to be successful. Successful. I think as as coaches and parents, uh, what we are, you know, these days, those are the three things that you bring to the table every day. And for Mm -hmm. for me as a young man, for me, as a guy that's that, that's been coaching in the National Football League, Locks, I give you a lot of credit for that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because you, obviously, you know, you was a guy that touched you, you knew my family, and they believed in you. Uh, I believe in you, and uh, you know, I give you a lot of credit for that. And I give a lot of these these uh, men on this on this chat the same thing. Steve, man, we had we had a different relationship, you know, coming in early on. Man, me, me and Steve was like we was thick as thieves. Mm-hmm. Madu was one of the greatest inspirations I ever had. Uh, Madu was my roommate. Karome and I, man, our relationship grew to a whole another level after we left college. There you go. Thank you. But yes, <laughs> you know what I mean. It's just it, 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 it's so many other it's so many other avenues, and you never know how people affect you as a person. But I give a lot of y'all a lot of credit. Uh, for me, and then obviously, and I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for y'all, and I'm thankful for the success that we had together, because y'all meant something in Locks, man. You were to do, man. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate that, day. That's real, Locks. Everybody's real, man. Yeah, and I guess we'll end it on that. Thank you guys all so much for joining. I really appreciate it. Hey, let's keep this up, boys. No doubt. Lila, thank you. Appreciate you putting up with all the, all the, uh, the, the headaches and stuff.